This is an Aqualung MBS. It retails for around 1100 US dollars and is their current top of the line regulator. Now this is the Aqualung DA Aquamaster. It originally retailed between $70 and $90, and it was the top of the line regulator from 1958 all the way to 1972. In this video, we'll dive the 60 year old double hose regulator. Then we're gonna break it down, compare it to the modern regulator, and I'm telling you now, you'll be shocked at just how little has changed between the two. Let's get into it. When Jacques Cousteau and Emile Gagnon invented the original Aqualung in the early 1940s, their regulator slowly took the world by storm and led us to where we are today with recreational scuba diving. However, Emile was never fully satisfied with the performance of their invention, and by 1958, a new model was introduced called the Aquamaster. The Aquamaster went on to become one of the best-selling regulators in the world, selling over 1 million units from 1958 to 1972. During its run, it retailed for between 70 US dollars and 90 US dollars, which in today's money is between 700 and 900 US dollars if you adjust for inflation. My friend, Patty course director Zach Matthew, actually got his hands on one of these models from 1965. He restored it, refitted everything, and actually got it in working order so we can go ahead and dive it together. Now, you might think a lot has changed from 1965 to today, but I'm telling you now, when we break down the DA Aquamaster and compare it to the current Aqualung Legend, you're going to be so surprised at just how little things have changed and how similar all the parts are. First, I just wanted to start by comparing what dive gear was like in the 1960s compared to now. To call out the obvious, the Aquamaster is a double hose regulator. No, this is not a rebreather, it's actually one hose for intake one hose for outtake, and those exhaust bubbles actually go out the hose and then out the combination first and second stage that sits behind your head, which is a really nice benefit because the bubbles actually exhale behind you. So if you're a photographer or you know videographer underwater, those bubbles can actually sometimes scare fish away or will sometimes get in the way of your camera as well. So having exhaust behind your head is a really nice benefit for underwater photography and videography. Next, you might realize there's no SPG or pressure gauge, there's no depth gauge, and there's no octo or redundant second stage either. Divers would use tables developed by the US Navy that actually influenced the current PADI RDP tables, if you're familiar with those. And then their tanks would have a special valve on it called a J valve. This J valve would have a handle that would come down the side of it. And basically when you got to your reserve pressure, it would be a little bit more difficult to breathe because you're running low on gas. And that would be your signal to pull that handle, which would relieve a little bit of extra pressure on a tension spring inside the tank valve itself, opening up that gas to you and allowing you to end your dive safely on your reserve pressure. As for out of air scenarios, the divers would actually learn to do what's called buddy breathing, which is something we still teach sometimes depending on the agency or depending on the certification you're going through. The divers would take their air loop, they would go ahead and take a breath, pass it to their buddies, their buddies would grab that mouthpiece, put it in their mouth, purge it by exhaling really forcefully to get all that water out of the outflow loop. They had to flush it all the way out. There was no purge on the mouthpiece. Uh, and then they could take their breath in, maybe two breaths in, and then pass it back to their buddy so they could buddy breathe, taking turns back and forth as they ended their dive and got back to the surface. Now you may also notice the quite trademarked vintage dive mask that Zach is wearing, that big round oval mask on his face. And one of the interesting things is there is no nose pocket. So you might be wondering, well, how do you equalize when you're underwater without a nose pocket? Now that came later in designs and in this design here, you actually had to reach behind the oval glass itself and there were these little pieces that you could press in and it would pinch your nose and that way you could equalize. So no nose pocket to just squeeze easily. You actually had just that single pane of glass that covered your whole nose and they thought that was safer for you and would give you more visibility basically. Uh, later, as I said, they came out with the more split design that had the nose pocket, whether it was two lenses or the single lens that had the, the cutout for the nose. Finally, you'll notice that there's not really a BCD so much. What Zach's actually wearing is from Sequest and it's basically a survival life jacket that pilots would wear in case they got shot down over sea. There's a little CO2 cartridge that you can pull and that would inflate the jacket itself, as well as a typical oral inflation like we would have on a modern BCD. And when I say oral inflation, I mean it. The Sequest BC that Zach is wearing actually doesn't have a low pressure inflator connector at all. Instead, it's just the oral inflation and that's how you can actually adjust your buoyancy underwater. 
That means you take a breath off your loop, orally inflate, put the mouthpiece back in, exhale forcefully to get that loop cleared of all the water that just came into it all the way up behind you, and then you can go ahead and continue your dive. Now, before I go on, if you're interested in seeing a full patty skill circuit of all the open water skills that you would do, but wearing vintage gear instead, so you can see how you would do it with the old types of gear, then let me know in the comments down below. I can go ahead and get some footage of that and it might be kind of a fun video to do. Now, lastly, going down to the bottom, Zach's wearing an old pair of force fins and force fins basically are really short, really flexible, but they actually kick really well for flutter kicking and were pretty preferred by a lot of divers back then. Now, in comparison to Zach, if you take a look at my full kit, you can see that I'm wearing a modern backplate and wing from Hollis. I have a redundant second stage Octo. I also have my dive computer on my wrist and I'm wearing some heavy rubber fins from Apex the RK3s. Of course, I also have my LPI connected to my inflator hose so I can inflate and deflate my BCD as needed, as well as that nice modern low profile mask from Hollis. As you can see, while some of the gear looks similar, quite a bit of it has changed as well, but before I go ahead and break down the regulator to show you just how little has changed with the mechanics of a regulator itself, if you're getting value out of this video, go ahead and leave a like and hit the subscribe button for me too. It lets me know that you enjoy content like this and maybe I'll be able to do some more vintage content for you as well. All right, so here are the two regulators, the Aquamaster and the Legend, broken down so you can see the internal parts and I've lined them up for you so you can actually see where everything matches up between the two designs. As you can see, it's kind of insane just how similar everything is in the first stage. I mean, sure, some things have gotten a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller to accommodate technological changes like environmental seals or balancing the first stage, you know, things like that. But overall, if you take a look at this, some of the parts almost look like they could be swapped for each other one for one. Let me just be clear here. We're looking at two different regulators made almost 60 years apart. And when you take a look at the insides, these parts look nearly identical to each other. Now on the Aqua Master, the big round first stage is also the second stage because remember, as you breathe in from one side, you exhale out the hose, but it does go back to that vent in the very back there. So, you know, that's your second stage to breathe in from. And then that's also where everything exhales as well, just like on a modern regulator where we exhale through our second stage. Now on the legend, we can see what I'm talking about. Like most single hose regulators today, you see that the mouthpiece has been moved away onto a separate single hose, which contains the full second stage within that piece that goes into your mouth itself. And sure, there's a couple extra niceties like a Venturi lever and a spring adjustment knob, which would basically just allow you to help adjust how much uh, flow comes through there and keep the regulator from free flowing. But all those second stage parts are basically the same type of thing that was in the big round can, just moved out into a separate piece that goes into your mouth off a single hose instead of having that double hose setup. I mean, truly, even though these are made 60 years apart, they still pretty much operate exactly the same. That gas is reduced to intermediary pressure where there's a diaphragm that's under the tension of a spring that basically blocks that gas from entering the second stage. When you breathe from the mouthpiece, whether that's the single hose setup or the double hose, that reduces the pressure basically between the hose line itself and that first stage, which will flex the diaphragm, which then allows for the pressure to be reduced, which causes the higher intermediary pressure to float through that second stage into your mouth as you take your breath in to inhale. Now, if you're interested in a more in-depth breakdown of how regulators work, I actually have a video on that as well. So look for that in the cards and the link down in the description. Overall, vintage scuba gear like this is really, really awesome. And I actually recommend you check out Alec Pierce Scuba on YouTube if you have some interest in, you know, this type of vintage gear or just, you know, what diving was like previously. He has a really awesome channel with really, really cool stuff in his collection. Now, if this old gear got you inspired to finally get out there and get certified in scuba diving, click or tap the screen now to check out the video all about how to become a certified scuba diver. With that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.